Truth or Lies. This is Douglas Bigford, Truth TV, Portland, Oregon. This is my new show. Uh, <clears throat> Truth or Lies. Here's what it is. This is episode one. And this is for everybody on YouTube and I'm going to be putting these videos up on Google, and it'll also go up on my websites. <clears throat> I have 101 websites, and I will be posting those websites seven at a time on each episode. Uh, here's the first episode. This is at AOL News, uh, dated the 26th of December, 2008. <clears throat> Man in Santa suit kills eight self on Christmas Eve. Covina, California. Stinging from a divorce, a man plotting revenge against his ex-wife dressed up like Santa, went to his former in-law's Christmas Eve party, and slaughtered at least eight people before killing himself hours later. Bruce Pardo's ex-wife and her parents were believed to be among the dead. Investigators plan to return to the scene Friday and sift through the ashes of the home, which Pardo set ablaze using a bizarre homemade device that sprayed flammable liquid. <clears throat> and to that, I'm drinking coffee. Uh, this is my drug of choice. Pardo, 45, had no criminal record and no history of violence, according to the police, but he was angry following last week's settlement of his divorce after a marriage that lasted barely a year. It was not a amicable divorce, Police Lieutenant Pat Buchanan said. Pardo chose to exact his revenge at the annual Christmas party, his former in-laws held at two-story home on a cul-de-sac in a quiet Covina neighborhood 25 miles east of Los Angeles. Christmases were that special time of the year. It meant so much to them, Russa Ordaz, a family friend of the victims, told KCBS-TV. In the past years, a neighbor dressed as Santa Claus and entertained guests. But the neighbor had moved away and there was no Santa until Pardo arrived about 11.30 p.m. The massacre began when an eight-year-old girl answered Pardo's knock at the door. Pardo, carrying what appeared to be a large present, pulled out a handgun and shot her in the face, then began shooting indiscriminately as about 25 partygoers tried to flee, police said at a news conference. A 16-year-old girl was shot in the back, and a 20-year-old woman broke her ankle when she escaped by jumping from a second-story window. Those two and the 8-year-old remain hospitalized Christmas Day. All were expected to recover. The gift wrap box Pardo was carrying actually contained a pressurized homemade device he used to spray a liquid that quickly sent the house up in flames. Police said Pardo had recently worked in the aerospace industry. David Saligo, a neighbor, said he saw the eight-year-old victim being escorted to an ambulance by four SWAT team members as flames up to 40 feet high consumed the house. It was really ugly, Saligo said. Another neighbor, Jan Gregory, said she saw a teenage boy flee the home screaming. They shot my family. When the fire was extinguished early Thursday, officers found three charred bodies in the living room area. They were met with a scene that was indescribable, Police Chief Kim Rainey said. Investigators found five more bodies amid the ashes later in the day and planned to return Friday to continue looking. None of the dead or missing had been identified. <clears throat> 
Authorities were unable to immediately determine whether the victims were killed by flames or gunfire. Following the shootings, Pardo quickly got out of the Santa suit and drove off, witnesses told police. He went to his brother's home about 25 miles away in Selmar, area of Los Angeles. No one was home, so Pardo let himself in, police said. Police were called to the home early Thursday, and officers found Pardo dead of a single bullet to the head. Two handguns were found at the scene, and two more were discovered in the wreckage of his former in-law's house. A car that Pardo apparently parked near the brother's home exploded Thursday evening, and more ammunition was found in it. Los Angeles Police Sergeant Francisco Wheeling said <clears throat> she had no immediate details on what set off the explosion. No one was hurt. Investigators seeking further information about Pardo's motives have begun searching his home in the suburban Los Angeles community of Montrose. Pardo's next-door neighbor, who did not want her name published to protect her privacy, said he moved in more than a year ago with a woman and a child. She said they kept mostly to themselves, and the woman later moved out with a child. <clears throat> Pardo was often seen walking a dog around the neighborhood and working on his lawn, the neighbor said. He also served regularly as an usher at evening mass at Holy Redeemer Catholic Church in Montrose, the Los Angeles Times reported. Jan DeTana, the head usher at the church, was stunned when told about the violence. I'm just, this is shocking, DeTana told the Times. He was the nicest guy you could imagine. Always a pleasure to talk to you. Always a big smile. Bong Garcia of Pardo's next door neighbors told the Times he saw Pardo between 9 and 10 p.m. Christmas Eve and spoke briefly to him. Pardo told him he was on his way to a Christmas party, Garcia said. All right, there you have it. There's the first episode of Truth or Lies with Douglas Bickford. Now, my, my condolences to all the family members of this tragedy. That's the first thing I gotta say. Here's what I'm looking for in this program. All of your responses to this particular story. Good or bad? Tell me what you think about it. I'm going to post a story on here. Please read it and tell me how it makes you feel. You can do video responses. You can uh, respond by making comments and just give me what you think. What you think might be uh, true about this story and what the, you think might not be true about the story. Because if you remember, I don't know if you remember, but a thing called Seven Up, Seven Chairs for Seven Children. Uh, my teacher got sat down seven kids. He whispered in seven chairs and he whispered something in the ear of the first child uh, in the first chair. And by the time it got to the seventh chair, seventh children, child, the story was completely different. And so all of you out there, think of that on a, a m millions of people affected by millions of different news stories about this one particular story on uh, millions of different TV shows, radio talk shows, and on and on. So what I'm trying to do is get your input about this one particular story in episode one. So please, you can call me at 503-995-0567. You can email me at... You can email me at... Um, TruthTVPortlandOregon at gmail.com And let me know. And I'll, I'll make all these contacts available and run out of time. Have a great spirit-filled day.